After you install the Active Tables plugin into your Adobe InDesign application, you will find its features in the following places. First, under Window, Active Tables, you will see there are three panels, Formulas, Names and Tables. Under Menu Table, Submenu Active Tables, you will see command for showing formulas. This means that instead of a result, you will see the formula which is creating the result. Create Report, which lists all the formulas in your document. Update all formulas, in case you have disabled life updates, which is the next feature. Convert text to formula, used for a text written formula to be converted into a live one. Labels, which shows and hides labels for tables with or without formulas in them. Sort, for sorting tables. Transpose, which means convert rows to columns and columns to rows, and create a new name. And last place is the paragraph style options where the formula options tab was added, you can pre-select the format type, number format, and different character style and cell style settings for the formulas using the, the given paragraph style. Now, let's take a closer look at these panels. So go to Window, Active Tables, and as the first one, we'll choose Formulas panel. Now let's zoom in a little, little and we can start checking the different controls here. You can see in the top part, Here's formula and edit field, which is currently disabled. This is because we do not have a text selection or we don't have a cursor in text. So to fix that, hit T for text. You can see it's already enabled. This means we can insert a formula. If we click into this field, a formula is added and we start editing it. We can either type in our functions and numbers or we can select functions by pressing this button and insert function. We select function from the list and by hitting insert, we insert it into, into the formula. When you're done editing, you just hit enter and the formula is edited. If not, hit escape and the editing is cancelled. Below the formula editing field, there, are, there is one more button. This one is used when you're editing a formula and you click on this, you're in cell selection mode. This means once this is clicked, you can click in different tables and the addresses of the cells you click into are added into your formula. If this tool, however, is not clicked on and you click somewhere else, your formula will be finished or added. If there's an error, you get an error message. We can, you can either continue editing or you can cancel edits and delete the changes on the formula. Below the part for inserting new formula, there is part for formatting your formulas. There are different icons for formats. This one is for general, which means it displays numbers as well as text. This one is for number, shows numbers only. You can choose how many decimal places your numbers can have. Also, how many leading zeros your numbers have in case you don't have as many digits as uh, to, to fill these places. You can decide on what to use as your thousand separator. You can also format your number as a currency either select from the pre-selected uh, formats, this is number and the dollar sign after that, you can also replace the dollar sign with the euro sign or any other currency sign you want to, or you want to use. There is percentage, or your result is formatted as percentage, you can either choose whether the percent is right after the number or with a space, or you can also type in percent to have this as a word. There is scientific formatting and there is the custom format. The custom format is then edited, edited in this field where the pound symbol stands for the result number, what is before the dot is whole numbers, decimal places is after, you can also use zeros, in this case when the number doesn't have any decimal places, uh, the zero is displayed, if it does, there is the, there's the number for as many decimal places you decide to use. The last part of the table is a list of formulas already in the document. By clicking on them, you select them. You can also click on them in the table and then click on this button, which is go to formula. By clicking on this, the formula is selected in the document and displayed. You can see how many formulas there are in a document here. You can also use this new formula button, which basically does the same thing as if you click in the formula editing field. You can also select one or more formulas and hit on the trash can to delete the formulas. 
The formulas panel also has a panel menu where you can define your number format options. There's more options than in the panel itself. You can choose different character and cell styles for positive and negative results. You can choose what to use for a decimal symbol and for the thousands delimiter. There's also the show formulas command, which converts the result of your formulas into the actual formula source code. So you can review your formulas in the table or in the text. We'll hide formulas again. Another command is create report, where you can choose the either table or global, which means the whole document and create reports showing you the formula results and the source code for them. There's update formula, which only is enabled when you have a formula selected, which makes sure the formula is up to date. Of course, if you have live updates enabled, there is no need to do that because all formulas update the very same moment their source changes. Update all formulas. Again, you only use it when you hit disable live updates, like, like right now. Convert formula to text. It's used when you have a formula selected and you're pretty sure you don't want the number to change, but you might want to delete the source table, so you just convert it and it becomes, becomes a static, te static text. There's convert text to formula, which is only enabled when you have your cursor either selected a number, which can be used as a formula, or if you have your cursor placed after a text or number string starting with the equals sign and containing a valid pre-evaluated formula, which in this case would be 91. So if we convert text to formula, the text is converted as a formula. This is another way how to create a formula that instead of clicking into the formulas panel, you can just start typing in the text and then convert. Either you select the snippet you want to be converted to formula, or you just start typing with equal sign and for example, B1 plus B2. And you just leave your cursor go to convert text to formula. This command is also in the uh, right click context menu so you can go convert text to formula from here and if the text is a correct formula you will be offered this function and everything from the cursor to the left until the first equal sign is converted to a formula. Last command in the table menu is the uh, in the formulas panel menu is the delete formula. So this was the formulas panel. Now let's get to the next panel, which is names. So again, go to Window, Active Tables, and choose Names. The Names panel is a panel which lists the names. The names you can use in your formulas instead of numbers or addresses or whole, whole parts of uh, other formulas and functions. The name can be, for example, we've pre-created one VAT, which means value added tax, and the formula is 20%. Then you can create a formula like this, which says, for example, B2, which is $56, times VAT, and it calculates what is the VAT amount from this, this part was 20% of the $56. If we delete this VAT name, you can see that this formula no longer works because it only can use the name which is created. So we create the name again, we click on the new name button, create the name VAT, create it in the global context. If we contain, we can also create it in the context of just one table. And in this case, you can only use this VAT name, in the formulas in this table. If it is a global name, you can use it anywhere in the document. So we can create a global name and the formula will be maybe not 20%. This time we can change it to 15%. And the comment would be value added tax. Okay to create a name. And you can see that already the number here changed. You can also import names from different documents from the panel menu. You can either do new name or load global names. And in this case, you select a document and import all the names which were created in the global context into your current document. So these were the names and formulas panels. Now let us close these and we'll go to the third panel, which is tables. Go to window, active tables and choose tables. You can see this panel is relatively simple. It shows us one table, which is the table which is in the document, the only table which is in the document. If I click on this item, the table gets selected. If I click on the name or double click on the name, I can change its name. You can see we've already 
uh, name this panel as the uh, name, name this table as the price list. If I copy and paste this text frame, I get another table which is now automatically called table one. If I copy again, it is called table two. Of course, we can rename this new table, so we can rename the price list to old price list and rename another table to price list. In this case, if we had a formula anywhere in the document which was referring to this old table, it now will be referring only to the new table called the price list. We can also change the numbers there or we can import a whole new formula and just name it the same way. Of course, this is not everything about the tables panel. The best features of this, uh, of this panel are hidden inside the tables panel menu. You can see there's this item called labels. If we set the labels to show labels for a selected active table and select this table, you can see that the table name and the letters for columns as well as the numbers for rows are displayed around the table for easy orientation. For example, if you want to create a formula counting these cells, you, you now know that you can type in sum left parentheses B1 to B4 right parentheses. Now if we put an equal sign in front of this formula and right click, choose convert text to formula, we have our formula right here and we were able to make it quickly. We didn't, we didn't have to count the rows, we didn't have to count the columns, we saw the address instantly. You can turn on these labels for all tables which do have formulas also by turning show labels for all active tables which means all tables which contain formulas from active tables. You can also show these labels for every table regardless of whether it does or doesn't have formula and you can hide these labels so they don't get in the way. Then in the tables panel menu there is a table options submenu which duplicates the InDesign's features for setting up tables. Uh, this is therefore the reason that you can navigate easily clicking on the items in the list and change the different settings here. There is also another very useful feature, sort. From here you can sort your tables, you can sort by columns, you can sort by rows, you can add multiple levels, that means that if some numbers in the first column you sort by were the same, then you sort by the second column, you can add, of course, many, many levels or delete. You can change different search criteria, you can search on the first or second word or number. Searching on the second word can be particularly useful if you have one column, one cell, and you have first name and second name in the same cell, then you only sort by the second word, which is the second name, if you want to search, uh, if you want to sort alphabetically by the second name. You can choose between ascending and descending sort by clicking on the A to Z or Z to A icon right here. You can uh, you can decide whether the, ser uh, whether the sort should be case sensitive or not. You can choose the range, whether you want to sort for the whole table, only for the selection you made in the table, or for the column or row, depends on the sort criteria you are currently in. If you check the move cells with content checkbox, uh, the cell settings like the fill or stroke options move around with the numbers you are sorting. Okay, just sort. Another feature there is a transpose table, which means interchange rows for columns and columns for rows. A uh, rename table here is the same as if you double click on the on the table, we can change it back to price list. The last two of these features are also accessible via the context menu, so if you click anywhere in the right click anywhere in the table, you can see that the sort and the transpose table options are in your context menu too.